Well, to find the best player of the weekend, how span elite performer of the match, as voted by the fans, he wasn't even one of the three, and he was outstanding. Bowden Barrett, Adi Savia and Dalton Papa Ali'i. Bowden Barrett comprehensively winning with 70% of the vote. Adi Savia, though, is in this conversation every single time we put it up. And if I look at this, this competition we've got in terms of positions, but the first five position has been everlasting on this show. It will be everlasting as Lord and Bowden Barrett and Richie Moanga are playing together. But Bowden was very good on the weekend, Mills. This conversation and this debate we keep having, is it getting more and more tilted towards this man? Well, after the performance he had in the weekend, I think so. Last week, I thought he was actually still a wee way away from his absolute best. This is glimpses of, 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 of him being, you know, the, the rank, well, the... Uh, the, the best player, player in the, the world, you know, um, and it was a magical performance in terms of what he did, but also being back in, in control of the guys and how they sort of, you know, manage their play. JK, I want to ask you this question. For so long, under the Steve Hansen regime, you talked about the fact that players didn't lose through injury or, f or opportunity, um, they didn't lose their spot. Is this different with this group, with the fact, you know what, if you play well and continue to play well? Because Richie Mwanga, while waiting for obviously the latest addition to his family, he wasn't in Australia. Does that all of a sudden mean that they've changed philosophy within the All Blacks? I think, I think you still get back in, but I don't think you get straight into the test side. You've got to earn that back. I think the other intriguing thing for me is I believe there might have been best 15 on the field. And so you play Mwanga and... Barrett, right, and who's going to play fullback. I think what this selection committee seems to be doing is competing in that position, and I think it's bringing the best out in both those players. Um, the hardest thing, Mills, and this is probably a question for you, you know, will Jordan probably get selected because of his form against the United States, but Moanga went pretty well. Mm. So Moanga's going to be out this, this weekend, but does playing Rome form against, you know, Italy count? to put them in contention, or are we looking for them to share up the last two? Oh, it's such a tough one, isn't it? Because Moonga had the momentum going into the championship, right? Um, yeah, those two Australian games, he played mag magnificent, he seemed to control everything well, and, you know, he, he, um, he stayed back to, to have his child. Um, on the other side, you know, Bowden got those opportunities. That's five games in a row. You know, so those five games really allowed him to, to get himself right to then, you know, to hammer that. And so it really came down to what Ian Foster was, was going, going to decide. And he, he obviously thought Bowden Barrett, um, you know, warranted that. But I think what we've seen is that, that he hasn't picked a team where Bowden Barrett's been at fullback and Mwanga's, um, you know, been at, been at 10 and vice versa. He's actually chosen on who's going to be the first 10. And I think that, that creates real stability within the team. And that's what he's starting to get now with the momentum um, around the rest of the group. I'm not convinced, JK, they've got a plan already going into France. I think they're waiting and seeing what happens over the next couple of weeks. They'll look at the guys and how they are physically, how they are mentally. But I think the inside running is there for a number of players, the likes of the performances of Adi Savia at number eight. Dalton Papa'ali'i at open side flanker, someone I know you're big on. Where does that leave the likes of Sam Kane and Dane Coles right now? for the rest of this tour, is it about playing a support role, playing against Italy, and do they have to wait for their next opportunity to start in a test match? Well, I, I want to just throw a question to you. I'll answer the question you asked me, but I want to I talk about Geordie Barrett, whether his long kicking um, game has actually made an influence about making sure he's at fullback. But to answer this, I actually think it's about balance, right? So I think that Dalton Popo Ali'i and Blackadder on the weekend, they do the hard graft. Now, Sam Kane's going to do the hard graft, we know that, but that frees up Adi Savia to play a bit looser, which I think is his best game. So where does that put, you know, where does that put Ioani? Where does that put... Jacobson. Jacobson. Where does it put those guys? And I think when you... I mean, we have gone through centuries of talking about midfield combination mills, but also about the balance in your loose forwards. So, you know, like I said before, I don't know if it's going to be the best 15 on the field anymore, it's going to be the best combination. So is that black adder? Oh. But then, for me, coming back to the to the Geordie question, you know, Geordie being able to smack one over from 55 yards, does that mean, and he's playing well tactical from a kicking point of view, do you say, well, actually, we need that in to put pressure, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, on giving away penalties? 
Yeah, absolutely. But he's also cemented his, his role back there at fullback, his, his long kicking game in, in terms of the goal kicking, but also um, his, his strength at carrying the ball back. We've seen what he's done in the weekend, um, but also his defensive effort. So I think he's cemented that and cemented his role in, as a fullback. To go back to your point about the Lucys, it is about balance. You know, you've got those guys you've just spoken about, but that, that isn't just about. Um, Blackadder being really good at something, being really good at being hard, or Popali just being really good at being over the ball, and, and, and Adi Savia being really good at the back. Of, they've all got a balance of that. They've got a really nice balance, albeit one of each of them has got a, a, a better balance than others, be it you know, running the ball or, or over the ball with Popali is a lot better than the others. That's where it's going come to down, come down to, and that's what's really working really nicely, the, the overall balance of, of, of their game, and it mixes really well. In terms of Sam Kane and that coming back, this, this tour for them is about them coming back. I don't think... You're going to get them playing in the big matches. It's about him being able to get himself right, get up to the level where his leadership is probably more important off the field than what it is on the field. So I'm not anticipating him to actually you know, stake a claim for a starting position. It's more about him you know, for the future, next year when he, when he rolls back out. And, and also Dan Coles, you know, those sort of types. But we need their experience off the field. Wholesale changes is what I expect for this weekend against Italy. It's bringing some guys back. It's giving the likes of a Josh Lord another opportunity in the All Black to uh, develop. Maybe welcome back a Shannon Frizzell. A number of guys who are returning from injury. I think at the moment they're starting to settle on the guys they want for the big games.